hi guys welcome back to my channel so I did film but didn't upload so this is my next video in the series so we're gonna continue speaking about the house rules so the day-to-day -day stuff that you'll be doing as a nurse every shift when you go to work um, before I kick it off from where I was I believe I stopped with bedside shift report for the last um, for the last uh, upload I did uh, I'm going to work tonight so I'm just trying to knock this out before I leave I'll be in the ICU pray for me that it's not crazy so let's do this before I leave uh, wanting to say the big difference here that I enjoy is that your shifts are fixed so if you're a nurse that work night you'll always be on night if you're a nurse that works in the day you'll always be on day so when you're employed you're employed for night or days most of the nurses that I've met and when I was being recruited I was told that they were mostly looking for nights because nurses here typically lots of them do not like night shift so you'll be night permanently you'll be days permanently of course if they're offering shifts you can pick up they call it so you can take an extra shift if you want to work in the day or if you want to come over and cover in the night for them when they're short but you're usually fixed I love that schedule um, in England I got so annoyed sometimes because I'd be on three nights then I'd go home sleep for one and then come back for three days or vice versa you didn't get enough time off in between for me I could work Sunday Monday Tuesday go away for a whole week on a vacation if I feel like it and then come back to work Thursday Friday Saturday next week so I do like the freedom that you have in between once you do your 36 and if you want three of them together I find that it's also feasible so while nurses here and what most of the world think that Americans don't get holiday you as a nurse you can do your schedule so you're getting lots of time off I could easily go away for three weeks without it eating into my all my annual leave all my PTO because you would have worked your three nights gone away till the following week and if you were to book six days vacation you could still get an entire three weeks because you would go after you finish the three for the first week you take the entire rest of that week then the next week you'll be on vacation next week on vacation and then you could come back at the end of the following week so you could get four weeks vacation with just taking six PTO that's two weeks off so I do like that your shifts are scheduled a fix your nights or your days no back and forth unless it's something that you're interested in although I notice a trend that some hospitals now are recruiting due to shortage they're recruiting people to work days and nights so a few of the travel contracts that I'm seeing now with different travel agencies they're advertising that that's a must that you can work either night or days you have to be flexible and that's because they are so short staff um, some places where I go they have no night staff some places where I go they complain they have nobody in the day so recruiters are trying to offer that as a package because everything is becoming so competitive and travel rates have gone down so just what I want that I wanted to say that's one of the ground rules you'll be fixed night or you'll be fixed day or depending on what you ask for you could be flexible if you want but typically night or days so you've taken you've gone into the room the off-going RN has introduced you as the oncoming RN and you do your bedside shift report certain things must be said during the bedside re report you have to say how the patient day went you have to say the plans for from the doctor for the next day and usually I go through what scans were done and 
and if it was resulted i'd say this scan was done like a ct of the head was shown nad nothing abnormal detected or i'll say the patient had an echocardiogram the ejection fraction was this blah 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 if it's relevant to what the patient came in with also i'd see me using my notes today <laughs> also you have to check the pressure areas so you turn you tell them you're going to do a skin assessment if the patient's uh, not mobile independent self-caring if the patient's mobile but do have a wound any wound that's there you must examine so you would start with the report and then you'd say oh may i just show my colleague your skin the sacrum may i just show them the wound or may you just turn over so we can just check or if it's a surgical site you could say oh and may i just show them this you show everything yeah the patient expect it and so you do so that's why the report is quite in depth so after you finish taking the report you should have enough confidence to pick up the phone if someone calls immediately to say what's going on so you are they do code status even though it's gonna be when you open your mar when you open epic you'll see it but you tell them this is a 24 year old female came in this time came in with they did this past medical history and if the patient's diabetic then you go through what IV access you have if you have central line if you just have a peripheral IV you go through that and you tell them that they're working flushing and they pull back well you have to do that you and you see the dressing on there if there are any fluids going you have to say you know this fluid is running at 75 mils per hour you know you have to go through it is thorough so that by the time you leave there are no surprises a few people break the rules and don't do the bedside shift report but if you see the manager or the charge coming you'll be in trouble they're like oh you should be doing bedside shift report it improves safety the patient knows what's going on and it cuts down on the patient calling you in the room all the time so it's a benchmark in most if not every hospital i'm in the icu where i only get two patients and each report sometimes take me 15 20 minutes because we go through even more sometimes there are lots of drips so lots of fluids running you have to go through each individual one and you've got to verify them in the computer there is a drop down menu that says verify and when you click verify you click and it comes up what the rate's running at you confirm if it's weight based you say what the patient's weight is that was used all that should pop up if it's something that's already running when you click rate verify you you and the individual going off or coming on confirm the name of the drug what it's running at and then the person sign their name and once you sign the name you click accept it comes up on the pump again remember i told you there are different pumps alaris plum 360 baxter which i'll show you some of those pumps photos of them in another video so it comes over and then you go over and both of you verify all your drips and then that's check then you go down you have to verify your fluid balance uh, you have to tell them the patient how much they've peed in and out throughout the day and if they're dry what's happened so you just give a synopsis of everything that has happened very quickly there are some things that are irrelevant that you don't have to say you say if the patient's eating you said what diet they're on if it's a regular diet if it's diabetic if it's cardiac you go through all that you say how they pass urine if it's a folian you have to then say oh this is a long-term foley from home so it's quite in depth it's a thorough report you also give the patient you some i always said does that sound correct did what my colleague said sound in line with what the doctor told you sometimes there's like uh -huh, i didn't even know that oh nobody tells me anything or sometimes when you're telling the nurse 
what's happened through the day the patient's like no i'm going home tomorrow no the doctors say i'm doing this because sometimes most of the times the doctors do not speak to you they're rushing by seeing everyone so unless you're there in the report and don't forget these are private rooms it's not like in england where they come into the bay and there's one two three one two three patients on each side divided by a curtain they don't come and find you. <laughs> the doctors here do not come and find you. In the ICU, yes, but in med search and step down where I've been, no doctor comes to look for you. This is a night. In the day, it's a little bit different. When the doctor comes and do, does the round, if you're there for the first, pa first of your patient, second of your patient, or you can keep an eye out for him or her and just go and listen but the system runs smoothly he don't tell you anything because then he goes and he charts it if there are any orders it pops up on your brain in epic and you will see and you've got to go in and acknowledge your orders so you don't necessarily have to see the provider the provider does speak to the patient so that it's why it's vital that at report time you guys decide uh, what you're going to say you say it in front of the patient you give the patient the opportunity to respond that's of course if the patient's alert oriented and was privy to what the doctor said and understand sometimes if the patient isn't a relative in the room who you've made sure that they are allowed to hear report, you're, you're always asked when you see people who they are. Because unlike the UK, hospital here visiting sometimes on some floor is permanent. You'll come in, there'll be three, four, five, six people. Even sometimes in places where you say that visiting is only two at a time, sometimes you'll go into a room and there'll be four and five. They might be the neighbor. You cannot do any HIPAA violation. People will get upset. I'll go into what HIPAA violation is because that's one of your ground rules as well. So you've taken report. You've done your fluid balance. You've checked on your skin assessment. Both of you have checked everything that's running. Everything is fine. The patient should be wearing SCDs on their feet, DVT prophylaxis. So you've got to check that that's on unless it's contraindicatory. So ev for everything that's not done, and some nurses are very picky. It's like, how comes you didn't do that? How comes you didn't do that? If there's things you have not accomplished, it's okay to say, ah, the patient uh, didn't get this. I didn't get that. I'm awaiting this drug from pharmacy. It didn't come as yet. So that's why I haven't done. Just give a thorough report of your patient. If your patient is on oxygen, you'll say, it's on two liters I turned it on when because of this because of that so you kind of go through everything uh, that's ground rules also once you finish your bedside shift report you then tell your patient that I'll come back once you go take the report for the next patient that's why lots of people don't like med surge or don't like that the ratio of patients are increasing because imagine doing that for six patients you start at seven and don't forget you don't start at seven because on these floors we have what's called a huddle when you huddle that's where all the nurses who come on duty and the tech and the charge nurse they gather and they talk about uh what went on that's the off-going charge nurse so the off-going charge nurse will come and speak to the oncoming charge nurse in, in a group with everybody coming on duty and they'll go through everything sometimes they go through all the patients so by the time you finish getting that report it's probably 7 15. Then you're going to go to six rooms to cover six patients thoroughly from top to bottom. By the time you finish getting a report, it's probably eight o'clock. And if you go into a room and pain is a problem, the patient expects you to sort it out. Sometimes you can say to the nurse that you take report from, may you just quickly give the pain medicine before you go because you know that you're not going to get a chance to come back to it straight away. So these are some of the stuffs that occur that makes the system run smoothly, kind of sometimes different from in England. So you've seen your patients, all of them, you've taken the report, now you're going to open EPIC. 
once you open epic remember i told you if there are any orders in there you'll see it pop up you just have to acknowledge your orders so when the doctor puts it in it'll it looks as if no nurse have looked at it once you've acknowledged it it's your job to do something about it because sometimes the off-going nurse may not have seen the order so you go in and acknowledge so let's say uh, at the end of the shift or one hour ago the doctor puts in that he wants the patient to have fluids the nurse doesn't know anything about it she may have asked earlier sometimes the doctor don't speak to you that is why you have to read you have to go into your orders at the start of your shift see that the patient is still on the diet you were told check that the fluid balance is still hourly because patients can get downgraded to once per shift to check output uh one uh, four hourly for certain things if blood sugars are done six hourly uh, or four hourly all those things are in there do not waste your time by doing stuff that's not needed check your orders and you go by the order if you think that an order is incorrect you call the provider or you ask your charge nurse meaning if you see something that's four hourly and you know that it should be done every hour you ask if there's a reason if you're doing neuro check for somebody who is a um, potential stroke admitted with stroke and you have to do a stroke assessment a stroke assessment is like hourly for the first 12 and then it goes to four hourly and so forth and so on so make sure that your orders are current because some doctors they put the order in they never go back to them so once you've checked your order then you'll know what to do for the patient you can open your patient on the brain when you open the brain you see everything that's due every hour you'll know when it's time for medicine antibiotics everything comes up on there don't forget that you have your PCT, so that's your care tech or your HCA as you're used to it in England, that will come and be walking behind you. So while you're going about doing your orders, they're in there getting the patient to, oh, stuff that they're allowed. So they can bring them something to eat. They can bring them a bedside commode they can bring a urinal assist somebody to the bathroom so you won't have to do all those things you'll get a call on your phone each time the patient presses the call bell because that's the reason why you log in with your number if you go back to another video where i said it's vital it's important that you log in to your number so once you log in with your number the beds that they have now are kind of connected so you press your alarm when the alarms pressed it will come up on your phone but the PCT are the the um, help they'll contact you and say hey your patients ask for this can I give it to them and you can say yes so they don't have to come to you the patient can also call you from the phone in their room so it's kind of easier in the UK there's no phone no nothing they're calling you to a bay way down the back so you have to leave what you're doing up front to go down there this is a bit simpler they you have a phone the patient have a phone there is the call bell everyone hears it and the person that's working with you will call and say hey this person here the fluids finished the IV is leaking they've pulled this out they've fallen out of bed whatever it is so those are the ground rules there are so many I think I'll have to put it in another video video because I decided that none of my videos are going to be more than 20 minutes. I think 20 minutes is enough for you to listen to me talk. So yes, those are the main rules when you give report. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching.